This presentation is brought to you by the Beljanski Foundation. Over 50 years of research towards curing cancer the natural way. So anyway, my name is uh, Dr. Matthew Silverman. For those who weren't here yesterday, I am board certified internal medicine physician in Saddlebrook, New Jersey, Bergen County. And I'm starting a functional medicine practice um, with my health coach, Carolyn, who's right here, Carolyn. And um, so today I'm going to be speaking about uh, fatigue, a lack of energy or an ability to make energy. So what, what, is, what is fatigue? I mean, what, what, what is fatigue? I think that the first way to talk about it is first to define what it is. And I don't think anybody really can define it exactly. I think it means a lot of different things. But one of the ways that I like to categorize it is first to separate it between peripheral fatigue, which we can think of as um, if you're exercising and your muscles get tired after a period of time, they get sore and um, you feel your legs are burning. And that primarily is a problem with energy production and ATP. And we're gonna, get, we're gonna go through that in more depth later in the, in the talk. And then there's another type of fatigue where we talk about central fatigue. And that is more perceived tiredness. It has to do more with neurotransmitters, which we'll also get, which we'll also talk later in the lecture. And of course, there's sleepiness. And one uh, condition that's really underdiagnosed is obstructive sleep apnea, which there are so many people that have. I see a lot of patients in my office, particularly men who have very thick necks. And if I see a patient with a very thick neck, I'll often ask them, what's your shirt, your, ne your shirt size? And most of them don't most of them don't know what their shirt size is, but if they do know and they tell me that they have a neck of 17 inches or greater, then I know that they probably have sleep apnea. So anybody, any you know, men in the, in the audience that wear a shirt size of greater than 17 inches really should be checked for sleep apnea. And of course, sleep apnea uh, is a condition where you stop breathing at night, you don't get enough oxygen and enough REM sleep, and you feel tired during the day. That's a very common part of fatigue caused by a lack of proper sleep, because you basically sleep through the night, but you're not getting the restful sleep that you need. So where is energy made in the body? It's made in cells through something called the mitochondria. Now, the mitochondria is, oh, I'm sorry, is, is this um, organelle right here, and there's all these little um, folds here. And really what it is, is there are membranes that separate electrical charges. And this needs to be done so that this is electrical energy that is converted to mechanical energy. And the, 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 you have to think of part of the mitochondria as like a turbine. And when these electrical forces are pushed apart, it causes a force that turns a turbine in the mitochondria, and that makes a chemical called ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. And adenosine triphosphate is a currency of energy, just like the dollar is a currency of money. ATP is a currency of energy. It's the way energy is delivered in all the cells. And in a, a very, uh, in, in a large way, a lot of diseases, I believe, are related to mitochondrial dysfunction, being that mitochondria are not working the way they're supposed to be because they're, they're not making the energy that they're supposed to be making. So it affects all of the organs in the body, whether it be the liver that needs to detoxify certain toxins or your heart that needs to pump properly or the lungs that need to oxygenate blood. All of those things need energy and we'll get into what the building blocks of, those ener of that energy is and all the different micronutrients that are necessary to make that energy possible. 
So what do you need to produce energy? Well, we've been talking about that about this the whole weekend is uh, fats. Now, all membranes in the body are made of a, a phospholipid bilayer, which is basically fat. So if you're not eating enough fat, you're not pro- making the membranes as as strong as they should be. So you can't get that. Um, that separation of the electrical charges that I was referring to. So membranes are extremely important and, and especially in energy production. So you need to eat proper amounts of fat. Um, protein is very important because uh, protein is used in what they call the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle, which is a cycle of which um, is a part of the energy process and Amino acids actually give a boost to energy when you uh, when you ingest them. So, uh, as as we heard yesterday from Dr. Furman, too much protein is no good, but you do need some protein to produce enough energy. Carbohydrates are important. I mean, of course, uh, the brain uses glucose for energy, but of course, as we all know, too much carbohydrates are not good. Too much carbohydrates get um, oxidized, just like fats get oxidized. And that's an important part of the byproducts of energy metabolism is oxidative stress. So when you burn calories, we cause oxidative stress, free radicals that can be very toxic because energy is neither, I'm sure most of you know this, energy is neither created nor destroyed. Energy merely just changes its form. So it has, it, it doesn't, it doesn't just disappear it has to go into some other form. And oxidative stress is an important part of that. And that's why it's important to eat a lot of the fresh vegetables that have antioxidants to neutralize those oxidative and, and um, oxidative stresses and, and substances. And of course, oxygen. You need oxygen uh, for the electrical um, uh, formation that, that's, that's required. And of course, that comes from uh, you know, um, deep breathing, proper uh, breathing, and of course, with sleep apnea, when you don't get enough oxygen, that will upset the whole process and will cause a lack of energy. So, you also need certain micronutrients, and we talked about that yesterday in a mul- number of lectures. And you need uh, niacin, you need um, B vitamins. Uh, whenever you hear pe- people say they take B complex vitamins, it gives them a boost of energy. Well, you need these cofactors for the um, processes that make uh, ATP in the citric acid cycle, and co- uh, vitamin C as well. Now, coenzyme Q10 and alpha lipoic acid are very important, especially coenzyme Q10. And we hear a lot about people taking coenzyme Q10, especially when they're taking statin medications, because statin medications are a poison to coenzyme Q10. Coenzyme Q10 is used in the electron transport chain. And that's what I was referring to when you have this uh, separation of electrical charges causing mechanical energy, this turbine that, that turns around in the mitochondrial membrane layer producing ATP. You need that coenzyme Q10 to promote this, as well as something called carnitine, because there's a, uh, called a carnitine shuttle that shuttles electrons and protons away from each other, causing a electrical, electrical gradient that produces a force to, to turn the turbine. And of course, alpha lipoic acid is another important uh, micronutrient for this. So, um, so that's why statins are, even though they're uh, necessary for some patients, they're obviously overprescribed. And uh, I see a lot of patients on this, and um, and people are fatigued from it, and they need the um, coenzyme Q10 to help uh, improve their energy levels. Um, so now we're going to go to central fatigue, and that, again, as I mentioned, was more related to neurotransmitters. Now, everybody know, uh, uh, is, I'm sure, familiar with tryptophan. Um, tryptophan uh, goes to serotonin. Serotonin is a feel-good type of hormone that you need for um, uh, good mood and, 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 um, uh, and 
of course, we use a lot of seroto selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors to keep serotonin in the, in the um, synapse, such as uh, sertraline and those types of antidepressants. Now, there, if, if there is inflammation going on in the body, tryptophan uh, is converted to something called kynuric acid. And kynuric acid is a mediator for fatigue. So this whole connection about inflammation, and again, it can occur anywhere. We just heard Doug speak before, uh, uh, two lectures before me about inflammation being anywhere in the body relating to the gut. I mean, if there's inflammation in your gut, if you have leaky gut, then it's going to affect the neurological part of your body, every part of the body. But this is a very interesting thing, how it's not just about uh, taking an SSRI to improve your serotonin, because the underlying problem is that serotonin is not being made. It's being converted to a different chemical that is directly related to, to fatigue, which they've done in studies. So that's where Treating inflammation, no matter uh, you know how you focus on it, is essential. I think to treating fatigue, and of course, uh, you know, chronic fatigue syndrome has been um, uh, um, related to a lot of different in infections, such as Epstein Barr virus. I mean, certainly, you no know, Lyme disease causes fatigue. So, uh, one important thing in taking somebody's history in my office is, you know, what was your? Uh, have you had been exposed to? to infections? Uh, do you have Lyme disease? Have you been treated with antibiotics? And people who come to see me, let's say they have Lyme disease, have been treated with many antibiotics, and that probably causes their leaky gut, which causes more inflammation, which increases their fatigue. So a lot of times we kind of go into a vicious cycle of, of treating these things, but what we really need to do is dampen the inflammation, get rid of wherever that inflammation is. And again, I agree, it's mostly in your gut. So I, I, I don't have a lot more to, to say about fatigue. I, I, um, I, I just, I, if you want to uh, work with me, um, my website is www.thepeacefulpractice.com. Uh, my phone number is there. I give you a free 15 minute uh, consultation. And um, I'd be happy to take any, any, any questions. Anybody have any questions? Yes. I'm sorry, could you just repeat that again? There are. I, I, ha I don't do it in, in my practice, but yet there are labs that do tests directly for neurotransmitters. Um, again, I think that um, uh, while they're, they're helpful, I think treating the underlying cause is obviously more important because uh, it's, not a, it's not necessarily a deficiency, let's say, in serotonin. Uh, just like, you know, so it, it, if it's inflammation causing it, you want to reduce the inflammation, uh, have the uh, patient eat better foods, more antioxidants, and of course, uh, supplement them with the proper, um, uh, whether it's coenzyme Q10 or alpha lipoic acid or B-complex vitamins, using food first, that's the most important thing. But of course, I think it's helpful to use some supplements when, when necessary. Which lab does do that testing? Uh, th there are a couple. Um, I believe there's a lab called ZRT that I'm, I'm familiar with that I, uh, I haven't worked with yet, but there's a, lo a lot of the conferences that do those kind of testing, and there's, there's some others as well. Yes? Uh, what was your phone number again? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll put it back up again. 201-565-0044. I'm in Saddlebrook, New Jersey, which is Bergen County, maybe 10 or 15 minutes from the George Washington Bridge, not far from, from Manhattan at all. Any other, any other questions? Yes? Excuse me? Is coffee, coffee. Is coffee a good thing? Uh, in terms of, of, of fatigue? Yeah. I don't know of any studies that show coffee uh, helps fatigue. I mean, coffee has a lot of beneficial effects like antioxidants. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a big 
believer in, in coffee. It doesn't necessarily have to have caffeine in it because that certainly can, um, can, can uh, be a stimulant and be uh, you know, not great for fatigue, but decaf is uh, good as well. But there's been studies to show that it lowers incidence of colon cancer, and it's um, uh, and again for the antioxidant properties, I'm I'm a, a big advocate of coffee, except not put too much, uh, you know, milk or sugar in it. I mean, I drink mine black a lot of times, which I've gotten used to, which I never didn't do in the past. But yes, I'm I I, I do think coffee is a, is a is a good food. Any other questions? Yes. I'm sorry. B, B, B12, yes, B12 is, is important. So any kind of B complex vitamin, against the B, the B vitamins, important for that part of the, the, um, the, the um, energy cycle, citric acid cycle. And of course, I see a lot of patients who have um, a B12 deficiency, particularly elderly patients that I supplement with B12 a lot. Um, uh, a lot of times I test their levels, which is readily available on most blood tests and find that it works very well. I think B12 is a very good thing to do, and to, uh, it should be checked for, I agree. You know, um, yes? How about if you have an anemic? Anemic, yes, that's another a good, a good point that I didn't cover. It depends on the type of anemia. Not all anemias require B12. You have to check the size of the blood cell. But, um, but yes, anemia is an important thing. That goes along with oxygen delivery. If you don't have enough hemoglobin, it can't transport oxygen to the tissues, and that can predispose to fatigue. That's that's a very good point. Okay, well, thank you for your for your um, attention.